there is quite a bit of information to share with you today on a number of topics. Um, so we have designated some time at the end for questions and answers, but we will be monitoring the chat throughout. Uh, so if you do have questions along the way, just throw them in the chat and we will uh, do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, so with that being said, um, let me introduce our chief, our chief executive officer and chief technical officer, Dean Bowles. Thanks, Stu, and uh, thank you, Nicole, and uh, the other staff that are on the call, Christy, um, for you know pulling this together. And thank you to everyone who's make, is taken the time to be a part of uh, uh, this uh, sort of information communication delivery. Um, really have to thank uh, all of you for your your commitment and passion over the you know, four or five months, uh, what it's been to keep your athletes engaged, to keep yourself engaged, your clubs, and so on and so forth through uh, an amazing, incredible, crazy time. Um, I want to thank our board of directors from uh, with Swim Ontario. They've, uh, you know, we've met uh, often. Uh, they have worked uh, uh, with us uh, and to manage uh, many of the internal pieces that need to be uh, managed and definitely to the staff as well as our, our, our uh, sport partners. Uh, you can see the agenda. Uh, so as Stu said, we have a bit of, uh, uh, of things to cover and hopefully we'll do a fairly good job at it. We're recording this as well. Uh, we, may, uh, we may have the slides available as well. Um, I have to say the staff have been full on from the day that we uh, basically closed up our offices uh, our office on, uh, I think it was uh, March 16th, and have been working from home. And periodically, some of us come into the office to do some of the required uh, business of, of things. Uh, but it's been a full-on effort, uh, all, all hands on deck, um, and, and uh, full-on time, well beyond what a normal week would look like. And uh, also trying to manage our, our overall budget, uh, we've had, uh, I think, uh, 17 inter iterations of our budget. And, uh, and just to let you know that our budget is at 50% revenue uh, and uh, with re uh, reciprocating expenses to reflect that. So it's, it's a tough one, just as all of you have most likely uh, have seen the same thing or exercised the same thing in your club. Uh, with that in mind, uh, further steps other than the government support pieces that we are able to uh, exercise. The staff has taken a, uh, a reduction in salary uh, so that you just have a, a bit of an understanding. I know there was a bit of flux and a bit of, uh, uh, and, and I'll take it on my not uh, uh, communicating uh, where we went to a four day work week. And a lot of that was around managing our time our days are full and with the onslaught of the of the return uh, programs is even uh, created more uh, but I was thinking of our, the well-being and I think the well-being of all that's involved in sport is, is critical so uh, with that with that in mind you'll see that we'll touch on return to swimming a little bit on the strategic plan performance funding Christy will talk to you about that I'll bring it back a little bit with Canada Games Christy and Stu may talk about the provincial team initiatives and then return to competition. Uh, Nicole will step in and, and uh, fill in some of the uh, gaps on that. There's things that we have pretty good understanding, a pretty good uh, uh, handle on things, and there's things that are so much uh, unknown. So next slide, Stu. All right, so you'll see just as a note, it, some events and initiatives coming up next uh, Wednesday, we have a, a, a sub club risk management return to sport. Another update on that around the, 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 the legal pieces and the insurance pieces. So you're most welcome. There will be a, a link to that later on. Um, we also have a, a regional meeting going to take place next week. Uh, class of 2020 celebration. Part of what we wanted to do, even though it was an odd year, definitely an odd season, an odd year, that we wanted to try and uh, recognize where we could recognize. So we will be doing a class of 20 celebra 2020 celebration of the graduating students. That should be forthcoming next week with certificates and, and a, a video uh, celebration, uh, along with a special uh, gift for each of the graduating people. 
We're working on the top 20 in 2020. This is an idea that came out from a, from some of the from a coach in particular, Kelly Steves, to try and make uh, lemonade out of lemons, as I describe it. And uh, we will have a poster uh, made to recognize that, and that will be delivered out to your clubs in in early August. Uh, we will have a, a, a Swim Ontario virtual AGM, most likely in October. Uh, we have to go run through some of this. So always some challenges. We will have a Swim Ontario Awards presentation. That'll be in the very beginning of October, possibly over three or four days. The official workshops keep continuing and the coaching education pieces keep continuing. So quite a few things to be a, a, a part of and really appreciate and thank for all of you that have uh, taken full advantage of all these opportunities. Next slide, Stu. So you should be familiar with this returning the, the training. Swim Ontario's, I think we're on version five, likely moving to version six, as we understand phase three of the provincial guidelines. Uh, as every uh, announcement that's come out of the province has always left a lot of head scratching to understand what it means. And that's where we're gonna be at and we understand tomorrow we'll know a bit more, have a bit more clarification. Uh, and then you're familiar with the Swimming Canada return is a version two process. So that's been very much the, the guiding principle for us. And um, we will continue to work with our sport partners, uh, Canadian Life Saving Society. They've been a, a, a guiding light in part of this. You gotta remember that three main pieces that we're really being concerned with is obviously getting swimmers back into the water and getting some club business uh, to take place. But it's all about mitigating risk it's all about a cautious, and, and for some it will be a slow return, but to be cautious. And it's always about the protection of the organization, Swim Ontario, but you and your clubs and your swimmers, it's about that protection that we hold dearly to. So uh, that in a nutshell describes the, the return to training, at least of the two uh, uh, pieces. This next next slide is a little bit of where we've been. We've been in stage one, two, and three, and currently in three, we're returning to swimming, in-person swimming. Um, and uh, just to give a bit of an insight on that is that uh, we, we have a process in place and it's quite comprehensive. You have worked hard at uh, creating the plans that meet the, the guidelines that have been presented either by your municipalities, your facilities, uh, local health authorities, Swimming Canada framework, and our guidelines, and really appreciate the, the effort that uh, you have put into it. Uh, but I understand too, is that the number of uh, plans have come in. We have taken this very, very seriously, and it is not a rubber stamp process. Uh, I have sat in on the, a few of the uh, vetting processes, and it's quite detailed, and um, I, I think I'll make mention of it, but uh, we, we definitely have taken it seriously, but it also has uh, been what we need to do. And hopefully there's good understanding through it. Really appreciate the, the patience through this process. Um, le starting to lean towards uh, stage four, and that's returning in the fall when we have our regular startup of a new season and things like that. I think we need to have some sort of pause or some sort of, you need to think about, I know there's been a lot of, excitement for people to uh, get back in the water now. And some of you are not and understand it and, and your time will come. But there's a, a big implication coming uh, and you're probably quite aware of it, but I'm hoping you're becoming aware of it. And that is around with school returning at the same time. We don't know enough about it. We don't know really anything about it. I would suggest that you start to make uh, the inquiries and really get a good understanding of that uh, because it will have uh, implications. It will have um, definitely uh, areas around risk mitigation added to it. Uh, the stress, the fatigue, the reluctance. Uh, and we all have seen around the world, even in this country, that with the return to the phases and opening up more and more, there's been some, you know, some setbacks. And we want to do our very best part to, uh, to uh, to be not part of the problem, but be more part of the solution. So you have to understand that we need to work thinking and about that uh, uh, more deeply than maybe perhaps all the stuff that you've done already. Um, 
I think uh, if I ask just before we jump forward, Stu, sorry. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Nicole or Christy, on what has taken place. Oh, hi, Dean. Uh, so uh, in terms of the return to swimming, um, return to swimming uh uh, plans. We've certainly been reviewing them twice daily. We have approximately uh, 40 uh, clubs that are back in the water and approximately 3,000 swimmers uh, that are either uh, back in training, so not necessarily back in, in pool, but there is uh, dry land, open water activities, virtual activities, as well as as, um, as, well as uh, pool. And so yeah. we, we meet twice a day and, and uh, try and review everything that comes in and, and make sure that uh, uh, we can get everybody back into the water in a safe and cautious manner. Yeah. So I really appreciate the efforts by Nicole, Darren, and Christy on this. And like I said, I sat in on some of these and it is quite comprehensive and it's quite uh, detailed uh, as much as your plans are. As we start to look at stage five, which is sort of the return to competition, or as I'm starting to look at is competitive opportunities rather than competition, because part of it is still shifting our mind, what I think is our mindset, because what was pre-COVID probably won't be part of the next normal. And so we have to get around, uh, around that thinking. So we have th some things on that. We are working with... Um, our, our Swimming Canada uh, partners, with the, even with the, uh, with the officials committee there, our provincial partners uh, with the Swim Ontario technical leads uh, and, the, and the officials committee. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a big thing to try and look at so that we can create uh, best practices, per se, and guidelines and uh, that we can sort of keep moving forward without any interruption. I think we can move along now, Stu. Thanks. Um, you know, I think the statement around the philosophy is what, what I've said already, progressing slowly through a layered process with the, including periods of reevaluation and recovery for both athletes, coaches to protect the clubs and the registrants. I think really, really important. I'm going to draw your attention to the last three bullets on this slide. And we want to include discussions around designated periods of pause to allow for appropriate transition into the 2020-21 season. The current registration period ends August 31st, 2020. So there's, there's implications around that and uh, things that need to be considered. The 2020-21 return to operations plans will need to be submitted for approval uh, to Swim Ontario by August 21st uh, for an early September start. We need time. We know that we're going to have to expand our uh, to our one team of uh, people looking at these things because we know that there's going to be more uh, just because you've done one but you're probably moving into different facilities different uh, groupings all these things and as I said before the whole idea around school poses a lot of things to consider and uh, I really do believe that we will have challenges around that that we need to be ready ready for and then the 2021 affiliation package is forthcoming should be out next week uh, lots of changes have taken place uh, you know, including the submission of a return to operations plan and the proper registration of swimmers before return to training, along with all the other forms. Working with Swimming Canada, they are working through a system to uh, create it to be, uh, I'll call it worker user friendly for the registrars. But with this in mind, going to this type of uh, uh, platform, there is some uh, a lot of work is being done, but there's also lots of challenges, lots of bugs in it. But hopefully, we will, you will, uh, your people will be able to see that uh, uh, come through. So that's a little bit of a heads up on that. Hopefully, you'll start to see that and understand it as uh, time uh, uh, moves on. We know that some clubs have already started their registration, but I believe that that, that everything will meld together in the manner that it will by the time we hit the early September. Next slide. So in and out of the water, I think it's pretty clear what uh, has been uh, said already. Uh, you've put this into your plans. Uh, you've been working it with it with your athletes, with your virtual calls, things like that. Great job. 
Great job. Um, one last bullet there. We need your support in encouraging a safe and responsible return to swimming when using your social media platform to spotlight the fun associated with swimming. We ask you to uh, do it in, uh, so it depicting the best practices in the manner associated with your stated return plan. I think it's really important because sometimes we may view things or others view it, we hear about it, we're not sure what that really means. And so be, caught, be uh, conscious of this. Oh, someone's calling me. Okay. Um, okay. Hopefully that's uh, understood. Thank you. The next few slides is around the strategic plan. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, you are at least aware that we are and have been working on a new strategic plan that it has been uh, accepted by the board back in January. That's a while back. But the idea is uh, to to move forward from the from the successful uh, current plan move forward to the next uh, eight years two quadrennials even though this year a, a bit of a monkey wrench has been thrown into it we're probably looking at some uh, uh, a hybrid of some sort in certain areas but it will be the guiding principles as we try to move forward into uh, the, er the areas that we felt that we've uh, uh, done very well in and on the areas that we need to do a bit better on Next slide. So you can see that the uh, way it says here that we, you know, we believe that uh, we have demonstrated this being a leader in Canada's sport community and a, and a global leader in swimming. I think our results have shown that, but also just in our whole uh, delivery of programming uh, and the way we conduct our business in a very much a professional and uh, we'll call it a responsible abiding manner. Um, next slide. So not much departure, too much from what was already in place uh, for the 2013 to 2020 plan. Uh, just, you know, the vision being a world leader in swimming excellent at all levels. The mission being best in class provincial sport organization that supports performance and per, uh, participation for life. Our core values remain the same with the, one of the uh, drivers here of being a safe, respectful, inclusive, and welcoming environment, but also people drive our success. And I think the other uh, uh, values uh, speak for themselves. You'll see that we're, we've moved from having four pillars to three priorities, and that form the foundation success for the next eight years. Uh, performance swimming, moved a little bit away from high performance swimming, but to cover it off in performance swimming, still recognizing that high performance uh, pathway, but also recognizing the other pathways, including para swimming, master swimming, and, uh, and, and all the development pieces in between. Uh, so we believe that we have, uh, we've identified it well. Our second priority will be our club support, engagement, and programming. Our third one will be programming. Or organizational excellence and education governance. Uh, each one works within each other, and I think the next slide should demonstrate that. So you can see how they all intertwine with each other around the athlete, but also around key components such as the regents, the clubs, the officials, the coaches, the various staff, and the board of directors. So I think it's, uh, it's been uh, described well. It's a matter of now putting it into play. And, and, and as I said, it will be somewhat of a hybrid uh, as we move forward and what we can action and what we have to put a bit on hold just under the conditions that we're experiencing. Now I'm going to uh, jump to performance funding, but I'm going to turn it over to Christy. And just be aware when you start to see these things, it is based on what we're, we're dealing with and how we've had to adjust our budgeting process for the next uh, uh, for, for this uh, current fiscal. Christy? Okay, thank you, Dean. So I'm just going to read out this uh, because it's important uh, to Dean's point to understand that uh, when it comes to performance funding, uh, there are a number of partners that work together to uh, ensure that the funding is there. So all program opportunities are made possible by Swim Ontario through the OPSI program funded by the Ministry of Heritage, Tourism, Sport, and culture industry of the government of Ontario. And full disclosure, disclosure moving forward, I'm just gonna call the ministry the ministry because it is a long drawn out name. 
Next slide, Stu. So uh, this is just uh, for everybody's, uh, to refresh everybody's memory, this is just an outline of the performance funding that uh, we approved for 2019-2020, pre-COVID. Um, senior performances, top 50 in the world. Um, four cards at 20,000, five cards at 12,000, one card at 8,000. Uh, for the juniors, 18 and under, based on on-track performances, regardless of gender, there were six cards at 3,000 each. And then para, the top four para athletes who did not receive the uh, Sport Canada cards, there were four cards at $2,500 each, two female and two male. Next slide. Um, moving to now during COVID and um, keeping in mind um, Dean's uh, point about funding, and uh, budgeting and iterations that we've gone through for 2020-2021 athlete performance funding. Uh, we have had to make adjustments um, with regards to the senior carding due to lack of international performances or the performance window being shortened. Senior cards will be rolled over from 2019-2020 through to this season. Um, athletes will be funded based on the world rank as, as of November 1st, 2019, and eligible athletes are subject um, to eligibility rules published in our documents. Um, with the juniors, due to the number of on-track performances, again, due to the shortened performance window, um, we're looking at long course performances from the 2019-2020 season. Um, in, in that shortened performance window and performances are being ranked with the top six eligible athletes receiving funding. Uh, with regards to para, again, a shortened performance window in terms of eligible competitions. The 2019-2020 para cards are being rolled over. Um, athletes will be funded based on performances of as of November 1st, 2019 and eligible athletes are subject again to the rules published in the 2020-2021 in the document. Uh, next slide. Um, so for this, this just goes into a little bit more detail. So uh, senior performances, again, top 50 in the world. So there's now four cards at $10,000, uh, top, uh, top 10. Uh, top 25 or five cards at $6,000 and top 50, it's one athlete at $4,000. Um, for the juniors, 18 and under on track performances, regardless of gender, it's now half, so $1,500 against six cards. And for the para, it's the top four for, uh, para athletes who have not received the Sport, card, the Sport Canada cards and it's at $1,000 for four cards. Next slide. From a ministry perspective, I think this is really important. We, we receive a lot of questions around um, specific ministry driven programs where we, where the PSO, where some Ontario helps administer funding. Um, so that's why we have this specific slide in here. With regards to OPSI, just as an update, um, there has been no announcement from the ministry regarding the OPSI program. Uh, we obviously are very hopeful and we have requested, um, we've, myself and Dean have been on a number of teletown halls where the minister herself has been on, uh, as well as um, a number of specific, there's uh, specific tables. Um, there's a high performance table through the ministry um, and an amateur sport table uh, where we continue to request and advocate for um, uh, no changes to the OPSI funding, and that would be the same for the Quest for Gold. Um, so Quest for Gold funding, it, again, it is a program that's driven through the ministry. Uh, the criteria is set up with the ministry in conjunction with the provincial sport organizations and the national sport organizations. Uh, the 2019-2020 um, funding um, is uh, the athletes have been selected. Uh, the ministry confirmed that the funding would flow. However, it has not actually gone out to the athletes 
as of yet, uh, we are still um, we're still hearing from the ministry that it will go out any day, and uh, it will go directly from the ministry to the athletes. Um, with regards to 2020-2021 Quest for Gold, uh, the ministry is still reviewing this. Um, and again, we continue to ask and advocate for this program to, um, to continue into 2020-2021. Uh, um, um, but because it's a ministry-driven program, we are waiting to hear from them. And uh, whenever, that, uh, whenever that announcement is made or uh, whatever questions or queries we get from the ministry in terms of our input, we will continue to say that Swim Ontario wants the, wants the pro program to continue to exist um, and be able to allow Swim Ontario as the PSO to continue to give input into the program to provide the best supports for the athletes. Uh, next slide please. Uh, with regards to grants or scholarship programming uh, that Swim Ontario has in place, um, with our high performance club grant, uh, due, to, um, due to budgeting and iterations of budgeting and review, we have suspended the club grant program for 2020-2021. Uh, and this program will be reevaluated and uh, refined and reintroduced in 2020, 2021, 2020, 2022. And just as a reminder, our fiscal goes from August, uh, April 1st to uh, March 31st. Uh, with regards to post secondary scholarship, um, we've committed to and are continuing to support uh, current scholarship recipients. And um, we are reviewing the scholarship program for 2021-2022 um, with more details to come out in this coming fall. Uh, with regards to the Dan Taylor Team Aquatic Supplies Arena Post-Secondary Scholarship, long name, um, this program, which was... Uh, enhanced actually last year in 2020, 2019-2020. Uh, um, we um, were reviewing, um, we're reviewing, currently reviewing, there will be, this, prog this program will be offered. We just don't know the details as of yet. And so an announcement on that will be forthcoming and it will be, uh, applications will be put out uh, through on the Swim Ontario website. So uh, we are going to uh, offer this uh, scholarship. We just don't know the exact details yet. We're working those out. Next slide, please. Ah, the Canada Games. Thanks, Thank Christy. Thank you. No problem. Um, Canada Games, pretty exciting. Uh, it's always been a performance pathway. Uh, uh, de most definitely, I wouldn't call it a high performance pathway because, uh, but I would call it a pathway towards high performance, and and uh, we take it seriously, uh, as do uh, the other provinces, and uh, we're quite hopeful that uh, uh, that this will remain in place by the time August of 2020 rolls around. That's the website that's available there. Next slide. So you can see that the uh, the dates are there, August 6th to 21. Swimming will have, I think, I think it's about a five-day uh, uh, platform. It'll be in the Niagara region of Brock University. The swimming, uh, the ages are as as shown: 2006 or younger for the females, and 2005 or younger for for the males. Uh, we have yet to determine our head coach. We do have uh, two team managers, Karen Wilson and uh, Deanna uh, Karanko. Uh, so things are moving along with that. Athlete selection criteria is in the works. It's almost there, very much similar to what we did four years ago. Uh, just it's just in a different uh, condition as we move forward in the next stages. So we are going to identify a, a team. We'll call it the Canada Games ID program. We're going to look at the first uh, stage or first initiative to look at 50 swimmers per gender. Uh, at this point in time, there will be no in person camps. We're going to do things virtually uh, for a number of reasons. One, that allow clubs to just get back onto, uh, onto their feet and faces in the water without a lot of in, uh, 
and eruption as well. A lot of unknowns still around things leading into the fall. Uh, so we will uh, work towards having virtual camps and uh, you know, it'll be based on the ranking on the on track, highest percentage off the track three, uh, all long course performances from September 1, uh, 2019 through to April 2020. And the timelines, somewhere an optional monthly camp activity will be provided to the uh, ID athletes coach. So, uh, as I said, we won't be doing any um, in person, bringing people together or whatever, but we would hope we can offer something that would, can be uh, integrated into the uh, activities that are going on. Uh, this participation in the project is entirely voluntary and has no bearing on final team of selection. But we hope that we can offer things that are going to be uh, interesting for the swimmer to keep them engaged, uh, to get them to understand what the Canada Games is all about, how uh, exciting it can be, and uh, throughout the process learn some things as, as they go along. So we'll be looking at a period between October and uh, February uh, for this. And, uh, you know, certain things such as pre-activation plans, race plans, recovery plans, mental health resources, and a few more uh, activities that, that are still in the works. Provincial team initiatives. I'm going to turn this over to Stu or Christy. Uh, I can take it. Yep. Uh, so as Dean said, at this time, uh, we are not uh, hosting or running any uh, provincial camps. Um, the majority of our camp deliverables take place, would take place in the fall uh, and into uh, the January timeframe, uh, but we, we've decided to pull those back, understanding that clubs will be doing their best to get up to speed uh, with hope that we can have those virtual uh, ID camps uh, for Canada Games and perhaps that platform can be used for other camp opportunities. Um, the, uh, the, re the evaluation of this will be sort of ongoing and, and will develop as, as information becomes more available with regards to um, training opportunities and availability of, of training opportunities. Um, but it's key for us that our camp deliverables are easily integratable into the club program and do not conf uh, conflict with potential uh, training or competition options. Uh, we really do want to allow the clubs to do their business uh, and support that as best we can. Uh, with regards to provincial tours, uh, we, we are uh, putting a hold on those for, for this uh, coming season, uh, unless there are dramatic shifts in, in the information that we're hearing. Uh, the uncertainty around uh, competition availability and travel limitations uh, is the key sort of driver of that decision, but we will evaluate that as, as more information becomes available. Uh, with regards to regional camps, uh, we are putting regional camps and approval of regional camps on hold until early spring 2020, and that is in-person camps. Um, we will be trying to encourage our regional partners to, develop, to also develop virtual plans and we will work with them to, to uh, help uh, develop those, uh, perhaps using our templates. Um, and we will also be asking our, our regional partners to identify key imperatives for camp deliverables with goals and objective, objectives um, that will be important as they move forward uh, post COVID-19. Um, and I think this provides us a great opportunity to really refocus the regional camp deliverable process. So that's, they'll be, we'll be engaging in discussions with our regional partners to kind of help develop those plans. Um, and, and, and we really want to try to understand the number of challenges that, that, and, uh, that they are going to have to deal with within their, their jurisdiction. Uh, regional tours, we do have a number of regions that do tour teams as well. So those, uh, those will also be put on hold um, uh, for potential discussion in early 2021. Um, but again, uh, all very, all very much uh, pending uh, uh, further information and around competition availability and travel restrictions.
Thanks, Stu. Thanks, Stu. Before I turn it over to, uh, to uh, Nicole, uh, just a couple thoughts here, and it's just about framing ourselves or get our minds. I, I refer to it as a mindset, but uh, one is that I think uh, we may call it competition, but I think we'll be adopting an idea of competitive opportunities as we move things forward to, to help the swimmers m move their uh, swimming forward. I think we also have to understand how things were done prior to uh, COVID is not going to be the case. It's going to be different. Uh, it's got to be well managed, uh, very much the same as the, the return to swimming uh, uh, plans have been and so on and so forth. But also understand that it's going to have an impact on the club operations or the club budgeting process with uh, uh, revenues and things like that. It may, basically, it'll be cost neutral or cost recovery, but that piece will have to just have to take a bit of a backseat until we have a much better handle on things in a safe manner. So I just wanted to say that there's a lot of work being done and Nicole is very much part of that uh, with her group of the officials and working with the various partners uh, in this. So Nicole, all yours. Oh, Nicole. Uh. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. As we look uh, forward to these uh, competitive uh, opportunities, uh, we've uh, wanted to remind everyone of, of some of the aspects that are still in place. Our competition sanctions, we're not, a, we're not accepting them until further notice. That still remains in place. Um, and much like the return to training plan um, uh, development of those that that's certainly been going on with Swimming Canada regarding a return to competition, uh, working with Swimming Canada uh, and their uh, officials uh, committee, as well as as um, our officials committee, making sure that that we are uh, have a voice uh, there and are um, meshing in terms of the of what we, we see moving forward. So one of the, the things that, that we're working closely with Swimming Canada with is, is uh, looking at ways to reduce the number of officials that are required uh, for hosting of, of different types of, of competitions as we get to that, or competitions opportunities as we, as we uh, get to that point, and making sure that, that we're still um, uh, have the integrity of the results uh, with the, those number of minimum number of officials. Oops. Um, so that's one of the things. And another thing is also the safety precautions for officials, volunteers, host clubs, uh, the clubs that are uh, coming in. What do we need to have in place in order for everyone to be safe during, uh, during this time? So those are the things that we are working uh, with with our partners. So we're going to only look at a return to competition once we, we uh, feel that the athletes have had a, a good training base and we'll look at, at a return to competition opportunities um, uh, as Dean alluded to. Um, so some of the recommendations that the uh, Swim Ontario Officials Committee has put forward to uh, the CEO, uh, to Dean, uh, are that we uh, suspend the official development program procedure for the 2021 season uh, and that revised meet sanctioning pr procedures would follow uh, regarding this suspension. Uh, it would be a case-by-case -case evaluation of registered uh, active officials to determine if staffing is sufficient to run that competition. Uh, the meet referee on sanction applications, uh, we are looking at level three uh, officials with previous uh, referee experiences uh, for time trial in house competitions, which is a, a different from what our current procedures are. And uh, looking at assistance from level four or five competition coordinators uh, remotely, uh, if need be, so that we, we can uh, run those competitions. On deck evaluation procedures also, uh, we have certain criteria that, that were in place uh, pre-COVID and we need to look at different ways uh, to uh, manage on deck evaluation so that we can continue with officials development. So those are, are uh, being developed uh, as we speak.
Dean? Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. I'm going to turn this, uh, the provincial competition plan, turn it over to Christy to walk through this. Okay, thank you, Dean. And uh, we wanted to put this in uh, just to be clear with regards to provincial competitions as, as uh, Nicole has already explained and Dean has also uh, highlighted that return to competition is going to look different. Uh, and we need everyone's help in terms of collaborating on that. Uh, at the same time, um, we wanted to confirm and let everyone know that we've worked with the, our key facilities uh, that have hosted provincial competition, where, where provincial competitions have been hosted in the past, and they have agreed to um, put a placeholder on these dates for the, the provincial uh, competitions. So these were the dates that um, we had in mind um, pre-COVID, um, and we, we wanted to make sure that there was a placeholder uh, for them. Uh, moving into uh, 2021. Um, and also pre-COVID, we had been working on with um, Toronto Pan Am, uh, Markham Pan Am, uh, and the Etobicoke Olympium, and we're in the process with Windsor on a multi-year um, uh, provincial competition um, agreement. And so this is a reflection of that as well. So um, basically this was just to let you know that we have these placeholders here. We are looking, we are looking forward in terms of um, what, uh, what provincial competitions might look like in 2021 and to reassure or confirm to you that these are in place. Um, one just follow up comment with regards to provincial competitions. We typically would have already gone through, even though the facilities are secured, uh, we typically would have gone through a hosting uh, bid process um, by now. And because of COVID, this has been on hold. Uh, there will be at some point as we continue to review um, uh, information that will go out um, that will go out to clubs with regards to hosting. Uh, right now, um, that is still in review, um, but um, we do have these, uh, these dates uh, put as placeholders uh, for provincial competitions. And that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, just before we get on to questions and hopefully answers for you, and uh, we'll do our very best to, uh, to do so, I just want to uh, make note of a couple of, of uh, uh, dates I gather. One is uh, that the Swim Ontario operations are going to take a pause uh, August 4, 5, and 6. Um, as much as uh, we are very concerned with our swimmers well-being, our coaches well-being, uh, club and uh, volunteer officials well-being, I'm very conscious of the staff uh, uh, well-being and we need to take a bit of a pause and recharge before we know that it's going to get uh, uh, busy and uh, with a non-stop approach as we go we go forward so we will be resuming operations on August 10th so there will be a pause and then that that is an, in and around the, the civic holiday um, so with that in mind startup plans again the start of September startup plans uh, if you're looking at uh, your season starting in September, uh, that uh, you should have those in by August 21st. As we said already, it is a, a comprehensive process that we take. We take it very seriously. Uh, and that is for the protection of everyone. Um, as much as we're, uh, we know all of you are excited about uh, getting the game on and things like that at the same time, we have to be quite uh, conscious of, of that and cognizant of, of what it's required to, uh, to, uh, to, to maintain uh, the integrity of uh, what we stand for. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna re, uh, reiterate the process in September that you need to really try and understand what are the implications of the return in September, October with school, 
got to know. We saw what happened to BC. They went back to school. There was cases. We know in Quebec when they went back to school, there were cases. We see and read around the world when they've uh, opened up and gone back to things, there's going to be moments in time. And I just, just sent an article this morning about when is the second wave coming? So I really want you to think about that because there will be implications. We don't know what school looks like. Maybe some of you do have a bit of insight on that. But from where we stand, we don't know yet. And that might mean modified days, modified, and it might have impact on your schedules. It might create some opportunities where you might be able to use a facility uh, in the non-traditional times uh, that maybe hasn't been uh, operated before because you're outside the school, normal school time or uh, so on and so forth. So I really do want you to think about that and think about starting up slow again, managing it. I know you want to get your club and the whole program going. But it's really, really critical that we manage ourselves uh, through this. Uh, uh, there, there's uh, other provinces are looking at prescriptive um, pieces to that. I'm not sure if we're there. We're going to try and take uh, feedback from people throughout the next week or so to get a handle on where they're at from you coaches. We will be uh, uh, looking for, for that to try and shape something that makes a lot of good sense that's responsible and that allows our, our swimmers to stay swimming and moving forward. So I just wanted to reiterate that piece and now I'm entertaining questions, how we're going to do this too. No one's used the chat box for questions, but I do know I had a question earlier on about how, what's the impact of phase three, obviously 50, uh, 50 people together in the in, in indoor, a hundred outdoor. We're not a hundred percent what sure what that impact will be to uh, to a swim training um, uh, possibility. We've seen in different provinces, their uh, health authority has said something different than what we're working on. We haven't seen a lot of directions. Yes, we have a lot of uh, opinion. Uh, we have our own opinion. But at the same time, we, uh, we, we need to be quite uh, uh, cognizant of what is right. So we've, we're going to be in touch, obviously, with Swimming Canada and see where they land, but really with the Life Saving Authority. We've had some inquiries with our, our uh, key um, facility uh, stakeholders to get a handle on this. Uh, so, and then hopefully we'll learn a bit more tomorrow and find out who our, our go-to people uh, are to try and get some uh, answers around that. But it's been... Um, Across the country, there's different rationales be behind it, and I'm not sure if some of them are, are they're definitely not science-based, it's opinion-based, and um, uh, we will see where we can go to the expansion of things. But again, uh, we will once we know something, we will let you know. So Dean, there are some questions in the chat. I think I'm the only one who's getting them. Uh, so I thought all yeah, hosts I would get a, them. But. Yeah, I see a question from uh, John. SNC has suggested adding value added programming into our programs. Does Swim Ontario have any resources available for this? Dry land programs, sports psych, nutrition. I think we've been adding a, quite a few of that. And at the same time, we don't want to oversaturate things. So we do know that Swimming Canada is working towards a, um, a Swim Again challenge that will take place the end of September. Uh, weekly challenges that will be recorded and uh, ranked and, and, um, or no, uh, recognized with prizes. Uh, I don't think we want to overdo it, but obviously if we see something that is of, uh, uh, of merit, we will do that. But we, we have, I think we've been uh, applying quite a few opportunities throughout and we don't want to over, in my mind, we don't over, over saturate it, uh, but we do, we will take suggestions for sure. So Dean, um, we just have uh, a few questions in the ch it, that I have received, so okay. I'll, I'll read them off for you. Yep. Um, so there, uh, so Louise asked, do you expect the government funding to remain the same this year? That might have been answered already. Um, well, the government funding, it's, a, it's very layered. There's a, there's a sport funding grant we used to call base grant. That has been uh, 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 decided upon, and we're in receipt of that. It remains the same as it was last year. Uh, so we are uh, working with that. Uh, regarding any of our performance grants per se, such as OPSI, that runs a lot, that is a, a, 
a supporting mechanism to a lot of our performance programs. We have no word on that. Uh, you saw regarding the quest for gold, which is an individual uh, process. We do know, or we're aware of, of uh, federal relief money or federal money that is to come to the provinces and then um, uh, funnel down to the uh, various provincial sport organizations. But as we know it right now, our Minister of Sport, uh, Lisa McLeod, is in negotiation with the Federal uh, Heritage and Sport Minister uh, for more. Uh, but we, we, we haven't got a succinct answer on that. And so once we know more, we will, we will then figure that piece out. But uh, we're not, we're, we really aren't government uh, reliant and a lot of funding reliant uh, in a lot of ways how we look at it. But every bit counts. I'm not sure if that helped or not. But... Uh, that's where we're at. Okay, uh, next question. Has there a list of uh, athletes receiving athlete performance funding been published? I'm gonna uh, push this over to Stu. Where are we at, or Christy? Sorry, the, uh, for the upcoming season, uh, for the 2020-21 season, we have not published those lists yet. Uh, those lists will depend highly on the registration status uh, and the eligibility status of those athletes. So that we'll, be, we'll need to do due diligence on that in the fall. Um, so we're looking at probably a mid-October timeframe for publishing those, those names. Uh, so Sarah asked, uh, Sarah asked the question of uh, what does a season starting plan comprise of um, because she doesn't know uh, where their facility is at. She's not sure she can have something by August 31 or sorry, August 21. Um, so I, I think we're going to put out a, a template We're we're still working on it. Um, and I think that would help help a lot the clubs as to what that seasonal starting plan uh, will look like. I think that answers your question, Sarah. Uh, next question. Uh, Carol, sorry, we have um, some that are asking about insurance and coaching uh, uh, provided uh, to, work, uh, to uh, coaches. We can answer that uh, on the webinar that we're going to have uh, next week, and we can also answer it via email because uh, I'm not the we don't have the expert on this to answer that one. So I'm going to uh, pass over that one. Uh, but what they can do is pass that question on to uh, to the group who's putting that. Uh, webinar on that. Yeah, so we're going, to be, we're going to be communicating a lot of things in, in a communication. We're going to have the link for the, that insurance uh, webinar that will be happening, uh, and they'll have um, uh, contact people uh, that you can contact, and that, that's when you can uh, ask your specific questions, advanced questions. Um, so uh, affiliation package will be coming out next week. Please be patient. There are a lot of new changes. We're making sure we have it all correct and we are able to communicate it in, in an effective way. So there's that we, we are hoping to have that out. Uh, well, it will be out next week. It's just, I don't know, I can't give you the exact date. Uh, and the return to operations guidelines, so the, the ones that, that the clubs that have already submitted a return to operations, you've already started it. Um, it's just the ones that we haven't, we haven't uh, seen their return to operations, and that's uh, where, we, where we will outline those uh, requirements. Again, we'll have a template to help you uh, get going if you haven't already started. Nicole, I have a question here that's from, uh, I think it's Todd Giles at uh, Goldburn. Um, IOT, uh, be able to press forward with preparations for training our officials with what looks like club level time trials. When and what could we uh, see de devolved down the road or down from the level four or five officials to level three? Not sure if you get to see that question. Right. I, I do not, so I'm... I'm In order uh, to. Thank you. 
Okay, There's a new one for me. There we go. In order. Sorry, if we could just get Todd to. So I I, I missed yeah, some of that. Todd, Todd can send a direct question to Nicole. That would probably if help. If you guys are okay, I'll do it for the group because it's probably going to impact some of the smaller clubs that have less officials than the big ones. Um, for the level four, level five, there was some. That's where the start to training of your lower level officials is like myself i'm okay in front of any group and i can teach that's what i do but because i'm only a level three i can't teach independently without having a level four or level five so i've got a group of people coming along i can't officially teach them because i need to be supervised as well so i'm wondering if some of those responsibilities could be devolved down either on a case-by-case -case basis or maybe look at those responsibilities and see if maybe they couldn't be put down at the level three level. Uh, sure, Todd, we'll take that in, into consideration. I believe that we've already started talking about it. We just don't have uh, specifics on it yet. Okay, if you uh, want to sidebar me later on that, that'd be great. Um, I'm just, there's a lot of questions in my chat, so I'm trying to prioritize and see who um, we're going to answer all of them uh, in a in a follow up um, question and answer document like we did on our last uh, Teletown. But I would like to. Um, so Tommaso asked uh, the question, uh, is there going to be more flexibility with regards to qualifying opportunities for Canada Games, i.e. Mansask over Ontario Provincials due to travel limitation and increased costs? Well, we haven't finalized the selection criteria. We were uh, modeling it uh, of the, the 2017 one, but we'll take that, we'll take that under uh, advisement. I'm not sure if that will be uh, the case, uh, understanding your predict or your situation, but we will we will have that uh, discussion, uh, uh, and w it will be put forward to our support ma management committee for for further uh, deliberation. Uh, so Joni asked uh, uh, an important question: uh, if they've submitted a return to uh, operations, return to swimming uh, plan, uh, do they need to? Uh, update it when they go to a different pool? The answer is yes. Uh, the reason why is there are different protocols for different pools and we need to know uh, the scheduling uh, for those uh, pools or the baseball field if you have to uh, get a uh, permit for it. All of those, every time you add uh, an, an extra layer, an extra activity at a different facility, uh, we, we uh, are requesting uh, that you let us know. Sorry. Um, so there's a question regarding affiliation. Uh, but Dan Danielle, could you turn your microphone on and ask your question? Because I'm not quite sure I'm going to get it right. Okay. So, sorry, my iPad was auto correcting a lot of things. Um, if I understood it correctly. We have to have our participants registered prior or like during the affiliation process, correct? Uh, that's not correct. You won't get you won't get access to the uh, registration system until you are fully affiliated. That won't happen until September one at the earliest. Um, okay. So uh, what what Dean was was speaking to was to make sure that all of the athletes are fully registered. They have status registered before uh, they can uh, hit the water. And that's the same for coaches. Coaches will need to be uh, fully registered before they can put on a pool deck or in a baseball field starting September 1 because they are, um, they are no longer uh, insured. Insured, uh, and they need to complete their um, the forms that they're completing right now to be able to return to swimming to uh, training. Uh, those forms will have to get redone for the beginning of the season. Uh, it's a whole new season, and so all those forms will need to be redone. Uh, we will be communicating how that will happen. It will be completely different from what you are um, experiencing right now. And 
those have to be done uh, and have status fully registered before any registrant can go back to doing coaching, swimming, officiating. Okay, sounds good. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I just I wasn't. I wanted to get it right. <laughs> As you're uh, reading through some of the questions, I'll make note that uh, we had left the, uh, the August 22nd o uh, open water uh, um, opportunity uh, on the schedule right up until this week, um, where we had canceled most everything else, but we left our open water piece uh, to just to see if we could get it uh, to happen in Welland, but with the phase three not coming to St. Catharines and short turnaround uh we we have to announce that we will be can we have canceled the the august 22nd open water event to, that was going to be hosted in in uh welland um we were we were uh optimistic uh cautiously optimistic that it could take place and there was a a, a, a at least a level of confidence uh from our from the host to our some of our officials and people that were going to run that we probably could do it but with the time frame we just uh felt it's not uh not doable right now so we look forward to next year so i'll just jump in here sorry dean yep, to, no to, worries i want to make sure that i get this question in uh from louise as we are already in the water how do we continue to train in september in such a short timeline uh, the answer is Dean provided that. He indicated that we need to have a pause uh, in, in that training uh, so that we can get all of the correct paperwork. We realize there will be a lot to be done between September 1 and, and, and a restart. So even though you're in the water right now, there will need to be a pause from August 31 to September 1 and making sure that everything is in place. Dean, do you want to elaborate if I didn't answer? Yeah, well, well, it's one of those things that, as I keep uh, referring to, and maybe maybe I'm off my rocker. I, I question myself because I haven't had a lot of discussion about this, but I think it will become a, a, a pertinent uh, piece of information as we go forward. Um, that this added, we are in a sterile bubble right now. We are. Uh, if you've been able to get back in the water, that's great, but it's very sterile in the, in the way I would describe it to what it's going to be in September and with the return of school. And the majority of our swimmers are in school, will be returning in one form or another. We don't know. And so you need to really have a, a really good insight on that. And um, uh, like I said, the other some other provinces are doing a prescriptive I'll call it a moratorium on things. We've, we've uh, discussed this. We're not there yet. We want to have further discussions. We're going to reach out to some of the uh, key programs to get a bit of a feel of where, the, where everyone is at and understanding what September, October is going to look like. And um, because we know, uh, you know, if you've, uh, I think you do know that uh, when people do go back to school, there's illness, there's sickness or whatever on the best of years. This year is going to be even that much more uh, challenging. So uh, we really do want to, uh, to manage it as best we can. And um, I, I'm hoping that makes some sense to people. We have some things we still have to work out. But I wanted to get the idea that there has to be some pause in your thinking, thinking, your planning, and your execution. Uh, to, to what extent that is, I'm not sure yet until we have more discussion and we're going to move that discussion quite quickly for sure but uh uh right now that's where that's where i sit on that and hopefully uh you'll have those discussions um i think i think we're good for all the questions there there uh i did notice that um the CSCA has lots of great videos posted for coaches for value added pieces that might answer uh, one of the questions regarding um, uh, dry land training. And, and a lot of other, a lot of other things. So, um, yep, you're right about that. So if that's all the questions and obviously if, if one comes to mind, um, 
and uh, you think about it, please send it forward uh, to either myself or to Nicole. We'll, you know, to understand we meet, we meet uh, virtually every day uh, to discuss everything going on and our everything going on is, 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 uh, is even beyond what the, just the return to swimming piece. There's all the other normal activities that take place and, uh, uh, developments and things like that. But, you know, I just want to, uh, iterate again, everyone's well being is very, very important. We understand, you know, the nature of, of, of what we do, the competitiveness, the, 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 the ability to get back to it. But we will get back to it, but we need to get back to it in, in as uh, uh, managed way as possible. So anyways, want everybody to be safe. Really appreciate everybody taking the time. Thank you very much to Nicole, Christy, and Stu, and, uh, and the rest of the staff. But if you have questions, <coughs> forward them on. Thank you.